So get this. So I mean, this is how I mean, amazing God is. I mean, the God, people say, well, the God of the Bible, that's what God of the Bible is just as alive and well today. And everything that we're seeing, he's just in charge, as, as much in charge of everything. You think about all the events that have to come true for any one of these things, that's the God of our life, you know. And he, and so on the day Israel's being resurrected, they're chanting the resurrection. Then and it's not that they're putting it together, it's just happening. That's how amazing God is. Wow. What do you consider your style of writing? What are, what are you accomplishing with these books that you're mm, doing? Mm. Uh, I don't know what I would call it because, because pretty much when The Harbinger first came to me, I originally wrote it nonfiction, okay. I mean, totally straight out. And the day that I pretty much finished, the Lord said, rewrite the whole thing. Oh. And literally, <laughs> literally with a, with a narrative, with a story, put in like the Lord uses uh, parables, allegories, symbols to get his word, to reach more people. So it's just the whole story of the, of the Harbinger came in like two hours. I saw the whole thing, the prophet and the seals, which wasn't there before. And then when I started writing it like that, it had taken me a good while to write the first one. When I wrote that, it just literally wrote itself. It flowed wow. out every day. Wow. And I, I don't write books. You know, I never wrote a book before. And I, I'm just, it just, every time I sat down, as, like the prophet spoke, that it just, it just wrote itself. Wow. So that, now not all the books, like the, the paradigm is nonfiction and other ones are straight that, but, um, but this one, I felt the same thing because the Lord wants to reach as many people as possible. Yeah. And so therefore uh, the narrative or the story, and this one has a story too, but it's really a delivery system. You know, okay. you're taking on a journey, but then the Lord speaks. You're taking and delivering a prophetic message inside of a story. So you're yeah. basically like when Christ would tell a story about the kingdom, a parable, mm -hmm. you're delivering prophetic download information in the form of going through doors and and searching for this oracle mm -hmm. and and that's what you're really trying to accomplish with this book yeah there is there is so much that in a sense is delivered i had literally i had 3000 pages of notes oh of of what came down and so how to get this into you know this book um, and there's so much that's delivered i mean uh, of reality of re but it's done through this oracle. Um, an oracle is like a prophet, you know, and a man, and, and visions, and doors, seven doors opened up, and each one has another, another stream of mysteries of God. I know we'll touch on some of that, but it, that's, the whole, that's the whole point. It's how to, how to get God's revelations, how to give it to others, and things that are often very deep, but in ways that we can all, all get it. Okay, you're a preacher. You're faunching at the bit, as my dad would say, since he was from Missouri, <laughs> to preach this message. You are going to unpack a lot of what this book is. But you just went past something very quickly that most people would go, okay, hold up, hold up. You just said 3,000 pages came mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Unpack that for a second. Yeah. What does three thousand pages coming down mean? Yeah, the pages didn't come down, but <laughs> but but the, the revelation did. Yeah. Well, what happened? Like the, the the same process in the harbinger, the paradigm, and the oracle is there was a, a process of where just things started coming to me, and it was a period. I mean, it, it would come one after the other. This one. Explain that a little better. Where yeah. are you when this is happening? Well, I was in Canada actually, um, and I was preaching, and all sorts. Of, I was bombarded by this, this thing, the, the, everything having to do with the Jubilee, signs, everything, 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 everything. And then it, I started speaking there about that, and then things happened in the world the next month. And I knew, I said, okay, this is, Lord, is this the next book? I'm always praying, what's the next book? It could be in any direction. Um, and then one thing, then, then what happens, like with the Harbinger, like, is that sometimes when something will come into my head, or like in the paradigm, I'm, I'm, my wife is sleeping, I'm, I'm in bed with my laptop, and then kind of like, and like three things come to me, and I'm saying, well, is this true? I don't know if this is true. I go to the Give internet. Give me an example. Uh, it came, in the paradigm, it came to me, in, it, it said that here, is the exact date of 9-11 was determined exactly, it comes out to the exact date based on this biblical thing here. Uh, I'm that, without, without going into detail. I go onto the web, I type in the thing, the biblical date, and it's exactly, it's exactly three years from this other date. Um, it's all there. Actually, there's three things, and that, but that first it comes to me, I don't know if it's, if it's there or if not. If it's true or not. And then when I go to the web, it's like, there it is. And then sometimes, 
When I needed the next key, someone would say the word. You know, that was with a harbinger with this. Someone would say the word, or something would appear on my screen, uh, on my computer screen, that I didn't type in. Like, for instance, with the... With the I with want to write a book like that. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Me too. Okay. I want those no. pages coming down. That's well, what I want. The, the, the whole thing in, in, the, in the harbinger, where you have that scripture, the bricks have fallen and all these things. Right. I wrote... I, that all came without me even knowing that that very scripture was proclaimed from Capitol Hill on the day after 9-11. I had no idea. That came at the end. It just came on my screen when I wasn't even searching for it. Wow. So God just kind of... If I had to try to reproduce the process, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. It just... It happens. And this one happened for two years. And this would happen even when the manuscript went in, which is not, not long ago. I had, we had to take it back because there was more that came. Mm. My goodness. So you're just supposed to be writing books. Just bottom line. You're yeah, and other to things too. Books. While yeah. in the meantime, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I always knew I was supposed to, but I never did. Yeah. And you yeah. pastor a church, a congregation, and you do a TV show, and and and. Okay, and occasionally you go to Capitol Hill and open up a can oh, of, my goodness, you know yes. what, on on. I uh, love that. On Thank you. People that need to hear truth. Yeah. Well, if you haven't seen it, can we just? Yeah. T if you yeah. haven't seen yeah. it, you can just go and Google. Um, you can do John the Gun Capitol Hill, yeah. um, or or presidential inauguration. And it's um, just amazing. The, the Lord, well, the Lord opens the door. I mean, I didn't. All these things, just like you, you know, the Lord just. We didn't ask for it. The Lord, we just said, Lord, use us. He opens the door, and, and people say, Well, you have to have courage. I said, oh, I'm, I'm not. A, it's just I'm more afraid of him than I am of, the, of them. You right. know, at Capitol Hill. Yeah. And and the thing is that I know that the door opens. I, I, I have to speak it because I don't know when that's going to be again. Yeah. We have to speak truth, and this is the time not to be not to be afraid. This is the time to be bold. And you kind of had to wrap it because you only had so much time. Yeah. So you had to speak real so fast. So I'm used to going fast. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. We have at our congregation we have Spanish translation, and they and Spanish they speak fast. They can't keep up with. Yeah. Speaking, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know uh, I can I can already tell this audience is here, passionate, ready to hear Jonathan Kahn. Guess what? He's right here in the studio. Come on. I like it. The Oracle. You were in Canada. The Lord started to reveal things to you. You started to write a book. Typically, you write books every year. This one took two years. This is a very special book. Today is September 3rd. The number on your screen is available for you right now to get it. Uh, without further ado, how would you like to start this? Yeah, well, what is the, you know, what is the oracle, oracle, people would say, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, the oracle is another way of really speaking of a re revelation or a prophet. There were fake ones and there was real, there's, in the Bible speaks of oracles. But the, it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the amazingness of God. It's the reality of the God of the Bible right now um, in the world. It's really probably the largest spanning mystery I've ever dealt with because it's behind everything from the past the present, what's happening right now in current events, what is yet to come. It's really the master blueprint of the end times. And we'll touch on it, you know, everything a little bit. Um, it, is, it is so precise that like some others, it gives the exact years of events. It gives the exact dates in some cases. And I'll, I'll, I'll give an example of kind of like the streams of, of these mysteries. One is the Jubilee Mysteries, and that is that, you know, we know the Jubilee, and the Jubilee, you get back what you lost, you, know, you go home, you return to your ancestral land. Well, Israel, for 2,000 years, the Jewish people have, have lost their land, you know, more than any other. But God said in the end times, he's going to bring them back, and that's the key, that is really the central key of the end times. When you see Israel back, we know that. God is real. I mean, you see Israel, God is prophetic. This is, this is the time we're in. And actually, that's what led me when I was an atheist to believe in God because wow. of seeing that. So, so the thing is, but the amazing thing is that the mystery of the Jubilee is being used in the restoration of Israel in all these prophetic events, that things happen on exact set times, you know, on the cycle of Jubilee. That's one thing, and we'll, we'll see it. The other thing is there's something called the Parasha mystery, and that is there are these appointed words that are read in the synagogues of the world, all over the world, same word. They open up the scrolls and they read the appointed word, pointed from ages past. But what I saw, amazing stuff in this, is that these words, when they're appointed, they actually are prophetic. They speak of events in the world that, that happen at the time that they're read. I mean, at, in fact, I mean, there are things happening in the world and 
there in the scroll when it's read key events, in some cases to the week, in some cases on the exact day. Wow. And so, so we're, you'll see it. And we'll, we'll, I'll just give you, you know, a taste of that. So the, the story in a nutshell, I mean, just going to, because we talked about the story, it's just that, you know, a man is looking, for, a man has visions, is looking for a man on a mountain called the Oracle, you know. And the Oracle is going to reveal these things. These are the mysteries of God. That's the way of delivering it. Uh, but there are seven doors of revelation. When you open the, the one door, there's all sorts of mysteries up to the seventh door as this keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and so in the time we have, I'll just be able to touch on, you know, a doorknob, you know, or something, you know, you know I'll, I'll, I'll touch on a, f a little taste of each one. So, okay. yeah, sorry, set the stage. You know, we all know end times, Israel back end times. But what people don't realize, all these things were set in motion. It's about 150 years ago. Something happens. The Bible says, Moses said that, that in the end times, God will gather the Jewish people back. That will be the sign. We know Messiah can't come until that happens. But it's, he says there'll be a sign. Before that happens, a stranger will come from far away, and he will come to the land, and he'll do something. Now, now amazing, this is it, what happened about, this is about 150 years ago. A stranger comes from far away, comes to the land of Israel. It is a desolation, as God said. It is wasted. It's hopeless. The stranger will bear witness, said Moses, will bear witness about this is a wasted, desolate land, hopeless. And that just then, right after that, that's when God's going to act. That's when God's going to start bringing his people back. Well, it happened. The man comes. He keeps a notebook. He bears witness. He writes a book, bears witness to the world. The man we all know, but you, most people don't know he was part of prophecy. Mark Twain. Yep. Oh. Mark Twain is the stranger. He comes there. He walks to the land. And literally, as I watch this, he's, the words he says are the same words that Moses said he would say. Wow. I mean, some of it is word for word. And when he reaches the last day of his, of his full journey in Jerusalem, his last full day and night, there's an appointed word that's read in Jerusalem and around the world. They're opening up the scrolls. It's a Sabbath. They open up the scrolls. And what is the word appointed? The word all around the world, the Jewish people are chanting the prophecy of the stranger in the land. My goodness. So he's walking the streets of Jerusalem. They're chanting the prophecy. He doesn't know it's about him, and they don't know he's in their midst. So, and right after this happens, this is the year 1867. It's the first Jubilee year of restoration. Right after that, all these strange things start happening in the land. I won't go into it. This is in the, in the first door thing, but, um, but a, law, a city that reappears after 2,000 years. Um, the the uh, the, uh, all sorts of things are set in motion in that, in that year, and then the Jewish people are going to start coming back. It happens right there. But one thing also about Mark Twain, you know, for 2,000 years the Jewish people have, were praying, Lord, bring us back, bring us back to Jerusalem, bring us every day, every day. And then the, the, their main thing was, Lord, hear our prayer, hear us, and, and be merciful and bring us back. So hear us, be merciful. Mark Twain's real name wasn't Mark Twain. It was Samuel Clemens. Samuel means the Lord has heard, mm. and Clemens means and has been merciful. Mm. Mm. Lord have mercy. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. His parents, his parents, you know, one of the things the oracle says is that how every single thing in our lives, every single moment, every single thing, God is behind everything in the world. You know, now, now what happens is, now if you take, and I'm really cutting quick, but if you take, if you count 50 years, the 50th year from 1867, Will it take you to anything prophetic? Will it take you to a, a year? Of, well, it takes you to the year 1917. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 1917, the next Jubilee year. What happens is you, now the mystery, things that were planted in 1867 now are shaking the entire world. You've got the world war, the, and God works through everything, a whole world war. You have two empires, one empire, Ottoman Empire, Muslim. They've had the land for 400 years. Other side, they get in the war. Other side, you've got the British Empire. They just had a revival. They love, there's a lot of love for the Jewish people. Well, God's going to work through this war. He's going he's to fulfill his prophecy in the Jubilee year. What happens is there's a government in power in Britain, and they don't want the Jewish people to come back. Just as the year of Jubilee is coming, the government collapses. God lifts up two men, both raised on the Bible. One is, one is Arthur Balfour, yep. and the other is David Lloyd George, Prime Minister. All, and, and, and they have a love for the Jewish people. So God puts them right in place for 1917 year of Jubilee. What happens is there you have another Christian, another guy who was raised on the Bible, General Allenby, his whole life. God uses this, and all of a sudden the, the Ottoman Empire starts crumbling. 
The British Empire comes in, Allenby comes into Jerusalem for the first time in 2,000 years. The land is liberated from its uh, hostile occupation, and it's in the year of restoration. Jubilee, everyone shall return to their ancestral land. Wow. And the, the British Empire issues the Balfour Declaration, which says, this land is for you. I'm going to bring, this is your land. Okay, so the land is being restored. So all in the year of Jubilee, but there's all these mysteries. I'll give you an, an example mm -hmm. from this second door. That is, there, in that war, it's the first time in the history of Israel that, that wings are part of it, that air is part of it. Allenby says, we need planes, we need planes. So the first time, they're over Jerusalem, they're, and they're crucial in the restoration of God's purposes. Um, and so it happens, but it turns out Jerusalem is delivered without being destroyed because of these planes. There's a scripture, a prophecy, that God says, I will deliver Jerusalem as birds flying, birds flying. Now, on the day of the victory, the, in, the, in the English Book of Common Prayer, famous book, centuries old, there's an appointed word for every day. All the Allen B. soldiers are opening up their, their Book of Common Prayer, and the prophecy what's for that day is, I will deliver Jerusalem as birds flying. Mm. And, and the squadron that was crucial in this, their motto on their, on their planes, on their insignia, was the motto was, I spread my wings and I keep my promise. Mm. Mm. I mean, who could put this together? Who could put that together? They, by the wow. way, this is going to go. This is going to go all the way to, to Donald Trump. I promise you. Okay, I mean, wow. this is going to go right up to where we are right now. So you know, the thing is, uh, one other thing, just one other mystery from that time. There's a number in Daniel that's the number of the end of the occupation. It says at that time, you know, those who were occupying Jerusalem, occupying the land, they got to leave. You know, the number is 1335. At the very end of Daniel, it talks about days and something for the end times, but. 1335 is the day that the occupier has to leave, or the, or the time, the number. Well, in the year 1917, all over the Middle East, the, the number 1335 starts appearing. Starts appearing in Israel, starts, starts appearing on coins. It's the year saying the occupier has to leave. And the, the reason is, on the Muslim calendar, the year of, of the Jubilee was 1335, the year telling you have to leave the land. The Ottoman Empire has to leave the land, and so they do. It's just, I mean, how it all converges by the hand of God. Now, now let, me, let me tell you about, about, I mean, I know you know, Theodor Herzl. Okay. okay. Theodor Herzl is the father of modern Israel. He's the, the visionary, you know, uh, years before. He had faith. But what people don't know is that before he died, he had a secret that he told. When he was a little boy, or, or a boy, he had a dream of the Messiah. Now, we know Jesus said he's not coming again until the Jewish people are there, and they say, Baruch haba, blessed is he. Okay, so they have to be back. But he had a dream of the Messiah, and the Messiah said, this boy is going to prepare my people for my coming. And Theodor Herzl is the one who led them back to Israel. And now, now he gathered together this Congress, this Zionist, he started Zionism, moved to go back to Israel, and he writes a prophecy. He, at, at, right after he has it, he says, today I founded the Jewish state. Now, this is years before. He said everybody would laugh. He says, but in 50 years, that's Jubilee, 50 years, the whole world will know it. So when did he write it? He wrote it in 1897. Oh, come on. Fast forward, what's the 50th year? 1947, the year that Israel is voted back into the world to the year. Wow. But not only that, guys, not only that, but when I look closer, I saw that the resolution where the UN voted Israel, the plan, has a date on it. The date on the plan is September 3rd, which, by the way, is, is the religion. We didn't plan that. That's a, we didn't plan that <laughs> yes, at all. Yes, we did. did. No, we didn't. God did. God did. Okay. Got it. And so September 3rd is the day of that. So when you go back, when, did, when Herzl wrote the prophecy, he put a date on it. The date was September 3rd. So it was exactly 50 years to the day, the oh, Jubilee to the day. I mean, that's how exact God is. How can you put this yeah, together? Yeah. God interpreted. And now, now there is, um, there, now get, th this is really, I mean, uh, there was a, there, there was a code in the, in the Oracle, it's called the Jubilee Code, that was embedded from the time of Moses. In fact, Moses, God did it through Moses. It's amazing. The very first, the law of the Jubilee, you can read it in Leviticus 25, the law of Jubilee says, to Israel, you shall return. First time God says to the whole nation, you shall return to your ancestral land. It's talking about each one, but it, you shall return. The word in Hebrew, it's one word in Hebrew for you shall return. It's tashuvu, one word, tashuvu. Now, now many people know that the Hebrew year is different from the, from the Western year. Mm -hmm. And when they write it out, they write it with Hebrew letters because they all have number, number values. 
Tashuvu, the, when God said the first time you shall return, the numerical value comes out to 1948. Oh my God. The year that Israel returned into the world. Oh, the year that Israel returned. And, and, and beyond that, here's, an, here's a, another thing. There's a prophecy in Amos where God says, on that day, it's speaking about the day I will raise up Israel, I will raise up the fallen tabernacle of David, I will end the exile of my people on that day, I will, I will rebuild Israel as I did in ancient times on that day, they will plant the land, they will, they will rebuild the cities, all that, on that day, day of resurrection of Israel. Okay, in the 20th century, the Jewish people are opening up their scrolls, and it's the appointed day to read that. So they're reading all over the world. They're chanting, I will, God will raise up, will raise up, will raise up. The day was May 14th, 1948, the mm. very day of Israel's resurrection. Wow. wow, wow, wow. All around the world. Unbelievable. So they're all, they're all, so, so get this. So I mean, this is how I mean, amazing God is. I mean, the God, people say, well, the God of the Bible, that's what, God of the Bible is just as alive and well today. Yeah. And everything that we're seeing, he's just in charge, as, as much in charge of everything. You think about all the events that have to come true for any one of these things, that's the God of our life, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, and so on the day, Israel's being resurrected, they're chanting the resurrection. Then, and it's not that they're putting it together, it's just happening. That's how amazing God is. Wow. In the oracle, mm -hmm you are using kind of the vernacular of doors. A, mm -hmm. a traveler yes. is look, looking yes. for and searching for this oracle yes. for these prophetic truths. Yes. And he's yes. going and searching through these doors. Right. We're up to door four yes. here. Yes. So yeah. uh, just continue and yeah. keep doing your thing. Love yeah, it. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I'm just giving, you know, there's like probably each door, there's probably like eight big mysteries, but so we're giving, you're getting a taste of it. Sure. Okay, so what happens? You have, you had 1867, you have 1917. So what happens if you go 50 years? Where does it take you? It takes you to 1967. Mm -hmm. Everything like, did anything significant? Because what it's saying, Jubilee's saying, it would link to some way of, of restoring the ancestral mm -hmm. owner going back to his land or his possession. Anything with Israel, anything with Jerusalem? Well, you know, Jesus said, I'm coming again, as we said, you know, till when well, the Jewish people have to come back. Because for him to, for them to fulfill what he said, to say, blessed is he, Number one, they had to survive. That was a miracle after 2,000 years, you know, persecution. They survived. Number two, they had to come back to Israel. They did. But number three, they have to come back to Jerusalem because that is where he said it, and that is where he's coming. Mm. All end time prophecy focusing on Jerusalem. Now, for 2,000 years, much of the world didn't even care about Jerusalem. But all of a sudden, the Bible says, well, when, when the end times, the whole world's going to focus on Jerusalem. So here we are, the, re the reality of God. So they have to come back to Jerusalem. Now, now they, uh, when they came back, into existence, there was no Jerusalem. It was cut off from Jerusalem. But all of a sudden, strange things happened that they didn't plan. In fact, in fact, it was, you know who initiated the Six-Day War? The, the anti-God Soviet Union. Hmm. They ended up, they sent a false word to the Arab world, started the war, they ended up fulfilling biblical prophecy. My goodness. I mean, how God is in charge of everything. Right. So, all of a sudden, what happens at the end of that, at the end of that war, for the first time in 2,000 years, Jubilee, do that, the Israeli soldiers are entering the gates of Jerusalem, first time, 2,000 years, they are walking the streets of their holy city, everyone shall return to their ancestral possession, they come to the wall, they're weeping, like clockwork, and this has to be for Messiah to come. Now, let me give you some, some mysteries, a little taste of the, the fourth door. Okay. And that is this. There, many people know Masada. They know of Masada. Masada is that desert mountain where Israel fought its last stand against Rome. And the soldiers ended up killing themselves rather than being taken captive. So it's, the, it's the, the last stand. It's the grave of ancient Israel. But what people don't realize is for 2,000 years, God put a mystery hidden on Masada. Okay. Hidden for 2,000 years. What was it? Well, when Israel came back to the land, they decided to go back to Masada and uncover it. So they're uncovering, so here's a resurrected nation uncovering its ancient grave. So they, they're, they're back there, soldiers, they're back there, they uncover it and they find a parchment. On the parchment is a, is a prophecy, a prophecy from Ezekiel. And what is the prophecy? 
the Lord took me into a valley of dry bones. Mm. And God said, can these bones live? He said, son of man, these are, this is the house of Israel. I will resurrect them. I will bring them back to the land. And so he did. And it says, and then the amazing thing is he says, I will bring them back. And it says, and then you will know I am God when I have opened your grave. So here they are opening their own grave, their ancient grave. And in there is a prophecy saying, I will open your grave. Now, now, now there's even more. And that, <laughs> that is that, that there's something in the oracle called the Messiah algorithm I won't go through the detail I'll just say this that there's a time clock a prophetic time clock from the moment they return to Masada it's saying a pro it's saying that they are also going to return to Jerusalem they went to Masada in 1963 now now but it's much more exact than that I looked at the exact dates and I won't go into the detail but there's a prophetic time clock and when you count the days from the very exact day they came it leads you to June 7th 1967 the day that Israel enters the gates oh of my Jerusalem goodness. I mean, wow. exactly. And that, that's something that came to me on, on my bed. You, we asked before, and then I looked at it and said, oh, my, you know, God, you're... And so, okay, now let me give you, let me throw in another one. Uh, and that is the Day of the Lions. There's a prophecy in the... Remember I talked about the bird prophecy, the birds, you know, that was 1917, and that's Isaiah. You can look it up. Next to, right next to the birds is another animal. God says, it says, God will fight for Jerusalem as a lion. He will fight as a lion. It says literally in the Hebrew, as a lion and a young lion. Now, amazing thing. Now we're at the next Jubilee, Six Day War. Israel has to secure the mountains around Jerusalem because bit, the Jordanians are, are shelling them. So they send a guy named Colonel Ben-Ari. He secures it. It leads to, the, to Jerusalem. Colonel Ben-Ari, his name in Hebrew means the lion. Oh my so God. here he's fighting in lion, and actually the prophecy says, well, God will fight as a lion for the hill of God and, or the mountain of God, and, and the, his brigade that's fighting is called the Harel Brigade, which means the mountain of God. You have the lion leading the mountain of God. Now, now the head of the entire war over Jerusalem is a guy named Arik Regev. He gives the command, guys, it's time to take Jerusalem. His name, Arik, means the lion. So now the lion gives the command to another guy whose name is Ark Achman. He's the, he's the one who comes up with the plan to take it. His name means the lion. So you've got the lion, the lion, lion. He gives word to the, the commander of the power troops. They're standing on the Mount of Olives, just like the Lord's going to come from the Mount of Olives. They're standing on the Mount of Olives. He sends word. The guy who's the commander, he's the hero of the Six-Day War to Israel for Jerusalem. His name is Mata Gore, a very different name. But Gore means the young lion. Oh my goodness. So now the first two people who, get, who they enter the gates, first two people through the gates and on the Temple Mount, first two people is Montagor and Arak Achman. And the prophecy says the Lord will fight for that mountain like a lion and a young lion. Their names mean the lion and the young lion. My goodness. I mean, God, and, and, <laughs> and the gate, now I don't the gate that they enter in through to take Jerusalem is the, lion. the lion's gate. Hey. And, and, and there, I mean, there's so much, I'm just giving you taste. But the thing is that, that now why? Because it's telling you it wasn't, it wasn't them. It was God fighting yeah. as a lion. Yeah. And what's it telling you? When the, when the Lord first came to Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, he came through the gate as a lamb on Passover. Mm. Mm. Well, when the second time, this is telling you the second time he's coming, not as a, not as a lamb, but as a lion of Judah. He's wow. coming back. Wow. Okay. Now. Wow. Beautiful. Let me, um, let me give, this is why, Madam Lord, this is why it was two years, because I'm just yeah. sitting in bed going, wow, wow you know. Wow. So, so now let me tell you one more from this thing, and then we're going to take it up to right where we are. Okay. One more from the, from the fourth door, from the, the, the Six-Day yeah. War. The, the Jubilee, when it comes, what happens? You, everybody knows this. You sound the trumpet. You sound the shofar. You sound that, right. So could it have happened? At the exact moment that Israel came through the gates, they came to Jerusalem, they came to the Temple Mount, came to the wall, they hear the sound of the trumpet blowing. The trumpet's blowing. It's why. It's a rabbi sounding the trumpet, and he's not doing it because it's the Jubilee, and he's certainly not reading the Oracle. He's doing it because for a different, whole, whole different reason, but he does it at the exact moment that they come back to their ancestral land. So he does it. Now the guy, now, now when, when, when <laughs> Jubilee comes, it says the land goes back to the original owner. We know that. It goes back to its original state. So what was the Temple Mount originally? What was its original? It was a threshing floor. Hmm. King David bought it. It's the only time it's been bought. King David bought the threshing floor. In the Bible and in the Hebrew, the word for threshing floor is goren, goren. The rabbi who sounds the shofar is named Rabbi Goren, Rabbi Threshing Floor. <laughs> so, he, so he sounds it on the threshing floor, on the mount, and his name is that. He's born with that name, how God is in charge of everything, and he's born in what year? 
1917, the other Jubilee. So he's now 50 years old, and he's sounding the 50th year. It's his Jubilee. He's the threshing floor, and he sounds it. I mean, only God, now, let me tell you one more thing. <laughs> There's, I can tell you several more things yeah. about him, but just one more thing about him. And, well, let me throw this in. So I'm not going to go into it. It's, 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 it's I have so much. But no, it's that, that there's, a, there's a mystery that in every one of these prophetic jubilees, a child is born who plays the key part in the next jubilee when, mm. when they're 50 years old. From, mm. from 1800s, all the way, it's amazing. But, but he's one of them, okay? So, but not only that, I found out, I looked, and his name in Hebrew means goren, means threshing floor. But his name in the original language has another meaning. You know what it means? It means the horn. Rabbi Horn blows the horn on the year of jubilee. My God. I mean, wow. only God. So and that's going to set the stage for, for, that's it for the fourth door. Again, there's much more, but now to the fifth door is going to bring us to right where we are right now. Okay. So what happens? We'll count the 50th year, 1967, it comes out to the year 2017. Did anything happen in this year concerning Jerusalem, restoration, um, anything like that? Well, you know, we have a smart, we have very smart people here because <laughs> I hear uh, The thing is this, listen, on the Jubilee, you get the right, it's not that you go to land, you get the legal right to that, your ancestral possession. Mm -hmm. Now when Israel came back to Jerusalem, uh, they never got that because the world refused to recognize it. And it's the only capital in the world, the world, well the Bible says they're gonna fight over Jerusalem, so, so that's scripture, that's prophecy. But the Jubilee, when the Jubilee year comes, the, the right has to be given. So did it happen? It happened. And it happened through President Donald Trump. Wow. And not that he was reading Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's not that he was putting it together, but that makes it all the more amazing. Yeah. Because nobody's trying to put it together except the hand of God. Yeah. You know, and it's not about Donald Trump, it's about God. And, it, and God is in charge, as you said, of kings, of all, kings and all that. So one of the reasons why Donald Trump came to power was so, so that prophecy could be fulfilled. My goodness. And he, so, he comes, so, so he does it. He issues the Jerusalem Declaration, first time in modern times that any world power has ever recognized Jerusalem, first time since ancient times. That's how big it is. For, and now there's a whole mystery that links him to an ancient king, which I will not get into, that, that's in there, but I'm going to get into some other, another mystery. But that, that he's following the mystery of an ancient king. His words. Is that in the book? It's in the book. Okay. Yeah, it's in the book. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 he's following the actions, the words, even the declaration he gave is following it. But let me tell you a very cool thing. Uh, we, we looked at the last Jubilee with Rabbi Horn, you know, and he sounds okay. Um, what does Trump mean? <laughs> the trumpet. The trumpet. So the, what, it, it means he who blows the trumpet or the trumpet. So look at this. God has the, when does he come to power? The year of Jubilee, 2017. God puts the trumpet in power for the year of Jubilee. Yeah. So, so in other words, he had to be elected when he was, which is 2000, he, at the end of 2016, he's elected so he can start the year. What does the Jubilee say? Mystery says, the trumpet shall begin to sound. He begins to sound in January. He hasn't stopped sounding since. <laughs> <laughs> And it says, the trumpet shall sound throughout the land. Now, now again, this is a name he's born with. This, is, this yeah. is God's sovereignty. And so now, so the trumpet sounds, and what does it say? When the trumpet sounds, the land the, returns to its original owner. So what he sounded within about 30 days left of the Jubilee, and the land returned, was given the legal right. I mean, God. Yeah. Now, now let, me, let me throw in something else. Okay. Um, <laughs> if that's not right. There's actually, I look, there's actually a scripture appointed for the day he was born and he was born on Friday which is a Sabbath there's a scripture all was proclaimed all around the world and and the scripture you know so here so now get now let's put it together you know the Trump you know, the, the Trump has sounded the, the Trump is, is now brought forth into the world um, the scripture was this only scripture in the Bible that speaks of the bringing forth of the Trump the trumpet God says you will form the trumpet to be ready to sound at the appointed time. Wow. So here he is, he's brought into the world, the trump, and his life is waiting for the jubilee to come to power. Mm. And it's not that, again, not that he knows it. But now let me tell you one more from the fifth door, and then, we'll, then it, the, the oracle goes into the mysteries of the future. What is yet to come? Where are we? But I'll give you one more link to this, and that is this. There's a mystery in the Bible of 70 years. You know, the Jewish people were in exile 70 years in Babylon. The Bible says at the end of the 70 years, the king issues a, a decree 
which actually is recognized as Jerusalem. We all we know about that, the King Cyrus back then. Okay. He, so at the end of 70 years, it says after 70 years, the king issues the decree. Okay. Now, therefore, since Trump issued the decree, and he's the only other one in history, really, uh, that matches the ancient king, could it have come at the end of, a, of any kind of period of 70 years that's important in some way? Go back 70 years from 2017, and it brings you to the year 1947. Wow. Israel is voted into existence. That, and by the way, Donald Trump, when he came to power, how old was he? 70 years. Everything's 70. Everything, and, and so, and so, so, but now here's, the, here's what I saw. So it goes even deeper. I, I found the date, like the date, the Hebrew date when Israel was voted into the world. Okay, there's a Hebrew date. If you count now 70 years, 70 years, to the same Hebrew date, and it says, it says after that, so you count to the next day, it brings you to, it's Kislev 18, 2017. The date in our calendar is December 6th. That's the end of the 70 years. That's the after. Donald Trump issued the declaration on December 6th, the exact oh day my Lord. that ended the 70 years. My goodness. Wow. He wow. probably didn't read that part either. Uh, no, wow. he didn't read that part. I, I know that, <laughs> yeah, there are people who, who, who try to, yeah, okay. Give me, look, uh, okay, just, uh, part of that is kind of mind boggling. So, um, you, know, you, you, know, you know what, you, you just shook me because Jay Sekulow called me that day, yeah. standing in the White House, because we were getting ready to release his book, Jerusalem, right. that he had written. Right. And we were, you know, that Lori and I were there at the, at the uh, dedication of the, of the embassy and all that. But, but basically, um, that day, he wouldn't, uh, I think, you know, Jay was surprised yes. by that day. Yes. I mean, it, it was, it, that, that didn't get pre-planned, I assure you. Yeah, that, it was amazing. Yeah, it shocked everybody. It shocked everybody. But he was, and we know, and we know he was not calculating 70 years and no, <laughs> oh, that, you know, you know, he's not doing that. And yet, just, but remember, but, but, the, but, the, but the Trump, or the Trumpet, just does what it has to do. It's, it's a vessel. Yeah. It's a vessel. a vessel. And it doesn't mean everything about the Trumpet we agree with. And it doesn't mean, you know, sound of that, that shofar, that's kind of a, a harsh, loud sound. Yeah. But the Trumpet is in the hand of God. So God, <laughs> it's God who blows it. Yeah. yeah. For okay. That. So let's take so this amazing. moment as an example. Mm -hmm. When did the cognizant thought hit your head to start researching backwards from December 6th to the seven, end of the 70 years? Did, was that a download laying in bed one night late and you started thinking about that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't, it, well, I don't know if it was from December 6th backwards. It's when I started looking, okay, you got the 70 years, yeah. but what's, what's the Hebrew, what's the Hebrew date okay. of, of UN? And then if I, if I go forward, Jeremiah said after the 70 years, so we got, that takes you to Kislev 18. Then I put it together that, oh, it's the exact date. Exact so, date. So when you're writing this book, you're having the yeah. aha moments that all we're all having right here together. <laughs> yes. You have them first, yeah. all by yourself. I had a pre aha. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. I, that's what's been happening for two years. Um, I'm even. Funny? I mean, the point. What I. What I told you about the scripture of his birth. That only came. That came after the manuscript went in. It just kept going and going and get deeper, deeper and deeper and building up and building up and building up. So uh, just kind of start feeling how you're going to start landing this airplane yeah. and we're going to go into the into yes. the fur into the future a little yes. bit yes and yes. and jonathan pray for the people yes. do do Absolutely. you know all sorts of stuff yeah. do, take your liberty but absolutely. continue with about 15 a minutes absolutely um yeah the the if we go to the sixth door okay. sixth door is is where things are all heading what's the future where do, where does this mystery go where, where does it go well, uh, I'll tell you, that this is really, what I, when I'm looking at this, it's really, in many ways, a master blueprint of the end times, a master kind of secret or mystery. Because, by the way, think about this, think about, think about this before I do it. The 70-year thing, for that to come true, you just stopped at that point. For mm -hmm. that to come true, the election, the American election had to happen exactly when it did, wow. 2016. It had to happen, he had to come to exactly then. And what it's saying is that once you have Israel coming, uh, voted into existence, 1947, it means 70 years later, you're going to have a man who's going to come to power, who's going to issue that declaration concerning Jerusalem, and it will be in his first year because that's what it says in Jeremiah. That's what it says in the Bible. I mean, I mean that's all there. Mm -hmm. And he's born, and, and Trump is born right around that time. So, okay, 
All right, so now, now the future. <laughs> uh, the master secret is this. What, what is like the, the be, behind the Jubilee? It's everyone shall return. The mystery of the end times is return. The Jewish people, they return to where they have been. They, they, were, they were in Israel at the beginning of the age. They're back. Jerusalem, they have to return back. Everything has to return. In Hebrew, you know, I mean, the word for return is also repentance. It's the same word. Hmm. So the same, what the Bible is saying is that at the end times, the Jewish people shall return to Israel, Jerusalem, but they will also begin returning to Messiah. Hmm. My okay, and that's happening. I mean, that's a, saying there's a whole mystery there we won't get into, but it's happening. Okay, but this is so big, it also means the world will return to where it was. Now, what does that mean? Or, the, or, or, or mainstream culture, okay? Back then, 2,000 years ago, the mainstream culture was not Christian. It was Rome. It was Western civilization. It was, I mean, it was, it was pagan. It was anti-Christian. That is what we are witnessing yeah. in the culture right now. It's returning to that. And it's not, God's still on the throne with all this. There's great things to come, but we're watching it. That's why every time there's another thing, it's going back to where it was. Mm. It's part of the return. But another mystery, it was a, a cool mystery in the sixth door, um, concerns us, concerns the church. And that is that if, if Israel's returning, Jewish people returning, the world's returning, that means the church also has a jubilee. Mm. There's a return for us. And what is that? That, that where was the church at the beginning? It was the book of Acts. Mm. Book of Acts. It was powerful. It was revolutionary. You, it Lord. was radical. It wasn't so worldly, but it was radical with the, with the power of God. And they yeah. changed the world. Well, listen, what happened is often after that, they got very established and they kind of lost that power. They also, they lost their roots in many ways. You know, the church got assimilated. But what God is saying is, now for the end times, God is calling a jubilee for us. We are to go back to the power of the book of Acts. Thank you, Lord. We are to go back to becoming revolutionary, Beautiful. radical, prophetic, you know, and so, and full so, of the Holy Spirit. full of the Holy Spirit yeah. and world changing, mm -hmm. world changing, mm -hmm. radical, yes, yes, world changing, end times. Because when you look at the end time, it's like the beginning. And why do you have Jewish people back? Because they were back, they were there and they're back, yes. Jew and Gentile back, that's power. Mm -hmm. And so God is calling that so that, so that, you know, people say the last days, like, you know, it's so, listen, the last days, it, the dark gets darker, but the, the lights get brighter. Thank you, Lord. It, it, you, know, you know, I mean, we see many falling away, we see, we see apostasy, but those who stand are going to be, and so when we look at even the, the persecution, that is to form us to get us more radical. When you ask, wow. you ask that, that is all part of the same process. Yeah. And when you put this all together, and you look at this, and now, now, now where's it all leading? Well, well, it's like a puzzle piece because everything's leading to something. Well, it all began when everything, you know, Jubilee is you left, you lost, you're coming back. Mm -hmm. Well, all this, it, it all began, Jewish people leave Jerusalem, church leaves Jerusalem. It all began not with that, it began with one leaving Jerusalem. Mm. Messiah, when he ascended, he left Jerusalem to heaven. The whole world is following him. The Jewish people, they don't even know. They're following him. They all left Jerusalem because he did. But if they're all, now it's a time of return. So if they're returning, if they're ret everything's returning, if the Jewish people are returning to Jerusalem, it means somebody else is returning to Come Jerusalem. Come on now. That is the final jubilee. That is the ultimate jubilee. Because he, because that, that's the king and the kingdom. Yeah. You, you know, wow. Jubilee, what ha what's the ultimate mystery is that it returns to the owner. He's the owner yeah. and he's coming back. Mm -hmm. He's the owner of Israel. He's the owner of Jerusalem. He's the owner of the world. So the, the whole age focuses around this mystery. That's why when you read end time prophecy, it all ends with that final moment when the king comes back to his possession, mm -hmm. Jerusalem. So that, it's all leading up to that. Isn't that it's like we're following a script. <laughs> yes. and you are getting these downloads of yeah. these plot points yeah. and putting them into these amazing mm -hmm. books. Jonathan, I said it before, it's like I've never interviewed an oracle before. It feels like I'm, I'm interviewing an oracle. You're hearing from God, you're putting 3,000 pages of notes into one book that is culminating and leading up to just a beautiful story yeah. of Christ's return and love for his people. Yeah, I mean, I mean, meaning, I mean, where does this, well, I, I mean, it's the whole Bible. The whole yeah. Bible is, look at the Bible. The Bible is, is Jubilee. You, it's, we lost something yeah. at the beginning. We left our land, Eden, paradise. Mm -hmm. And what's at the end? We return, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, listen, it's so, you know, it's so big. This is why we said at the beginning, this is the biggest. 
because, listen, all of our stories are the Jubilee. Mm. All of our stories, salvation is the Jubilee. What is that? Is we all know we're not home. You know, we all feel like we're not home. It doesn't matter. I was talking to somebody, you know, the older you get, you, know, you think you'd be more home. The older you get, the less at home you feel in this world. <laughs> you know, because we're not home. Because, right. because this is Jubilee. We have a better home. And we have a better home. And salvation itself is part of that return, the prodigal son. We're, we, we're coming home. We're com and it, what God has for each of our lives, that's the Jubilee for us. And our whole life is getting that. Our whole whole life is rising to it. Our whole life is, he's the God of restoration. That's the Jubilee. Mm -hmm. He restores us. We are becoming, you know, we, 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 we started one way, we're becoming what we were created to be. Mm -hmm. and, all that, and if he did it for Israel, that's a picture, because the same God of the Bible did it with Israel for the whole world. Mm -hmm. So what you see with Israel, it, take it personally at home to your own life. God is the one who restores what is broken. He rebuilds what is fallen. He heals what, it, what, it, what is was sick. He, he plants, what, you have a desert in your life. This is real, this is not hype. This is the real God who took the desert and made it like the Garden of Eden. Yeah. That's the power for your life. Beautiful. God, you know, we talked, we talked, Matt, we talked before about pictures, you know. Yeah. Well, Israel is the picture, it's the illustration of God for the world. Yeah. So, you know, the Jewish people were lost, they came home. We're all coming home. We're all, the power is to rebuild, the power is to be strong again, the power is to take the, the deserts in your life and see them blossom. It's real, it's not hype, it's the God of Israel. He's alive and well. And the same God who did this for Israel is the same for your life. And if he's in charge, we, we saw how like, wow, I mean, you, you, you know, I was having all these, oh, God, every single thing had to be in its exact place. You know, we just touched on a fraction of it. Every single thing. Well, that's the same in our life. You know, Israel didn't see all this happening at the time, but when it ha when you look back, whoa. In fact, much of this here, I mean, Israel doesn't know, but the fact is God's here. So in our life, we don't often see every single thing until after. We look back, we look at a word, we look at, and we see how, but, but be strong, be of good courage, because God, that same God is in your life, and he's, he is working all things for good and all things for restoration in your life. And one of the things one of the things when it gets to, in, in that, in, in, in the last door, uh, that's a, seventh door is a mystery door, so we'll just, we won't, but, uh, <laughs> but, but the, the, it gets very personal because it's all about, it all comes home, and it's how do you apply the, the same power of all this into your life, you know? And, and when you look at the end of the Bible, now, now even beyond the second coming, what's the end? It, Book of Revelation, very end, it's the Jubilee. We all lost the tree of life. Now we come home to the tree of life. You know, we, we, what's our ultimate possession? I mean, our ultimate home, it's heaven is our ancestral possession, right. you know. And, and our ultimate possession is God. You know, in the end it says, and we shall be his people, and he shall be, we'll be his and he'll be ours. That, we belong to him, and that's the jubilee. He gets it back, and he belongs to us. Mm. He is our ultimate, ultimate possession in our life. That's beautiful, wow. So beautiful. It's September 3rd, the oracle oh. is out. Uh, we we certainly want you to get this book. We want you to get it for someone. Get it, send it to a colleague of this, a, a family unbelievers member. Unbelievers too. Uh, yeah. Just uh, mainly unbelievers, yeah. but but get it, get the book and get it to someone. Yeah. But on TBN, we do things different. We don't talk about things like this and that then don't give somebody the opportunity to accept that's Jesus. Awesome. So just look into the camera yeah. right there and yeah. uh, yes. let's get that. Yeah, that's my hope. The Oracle yeah. is for believers and non-believers as well. Listen, listen, you're here, you've been listening to this. First thing, and I was an atheist. I'm telling you this and I was an atheist and it was seeing the reality of God. God is real. This is telling you, number one, God is real. Number two, God loves you. And mm -hmm. God and God is the God of restoration for you. He's got something better for your life. And without him, you can never know it. You're like an exile. You're waiting to come home. And that's why you have something in your heart saying it's not right. It's never, never there. Well, God loves you so much. This is not words. This is the reality. God loves you so much. He would even give his life for you. The Bible says there are two two paths. One leads to heaven, eternal life. The other leads to hell. That's eternal separation. If you're not born again, you're on the wrong road. Jesus said you must be born again. What's that about? Coming home. Coming home. The Lord, He is your jubilee. So there's a jubilee waiting to happen in your life. So God is calling you right now. So if you're, if you're not there, you're on the wrong road. And you might say, well, well, how long do I have to get right with God? How long do I have to get things together? Listen, you got one heartbeat because, because that's all that separates you from eternity. Take that heartbeat as God knocking. And so it's saying, open up. That's what the Bible says, now is the time of salvation. Don't say tomorrow. You may not 
you may not be here tomorrow. You may not be open tomorrow, but you're open now. And God is speaking to you now. You, and, and listen, if, if he could give his own life, he loves you. So, if he could give his own life to save you, he would. And he did. That's Jesus. That's, that's it. That's all there. So you might say, well, well, how do I do it? Very simple right now. We're going to pray a simple prayer. Just pray along with me. The Bible says if you mean it, if you say it, and mean it in your heart. That's the most important thing. Uh, whatever, whoever, and, and maybe you've known God, but you've fallen away. God is saying it is time to be restored now. It is time for my blessing in your life. It's Thank the, you, Lord. So here, just wherever you are, just repeat after me, but most importantly, mean in your heart, simple prayer to say, yes, Lord, come in. Yes, have your way in my life. I want your will for my life, and I'm gonna follow you. Let's do it right now. Just repeat after me as we pray together. Just mean in your heart. Just repeat after me these words. Lord God, Lord God, I come to you now. Come to you. Now. I open my heart and I say yes to your calling on my life. Yes to your will. Lord, thank you for loving me, giving your life for me so I could be saved, dying for my sins, rising from death so I could have eternal life. Lord, I turn away from the darkness and I'm coming home. I turn to you. Lord, forgive me, wash me, cleanse me, make me new. Come into every part of my life. I receive you, I receive your love, I receive your power, I receive your presence into my heart and every part of my life. And thank you, Lord, by this prayer and by your word, which is always true, I can say I am now free, I am new, I am blessed, I am your child, I'm your disciple, I have eternal life, I'm saved, I'm born again, I have blessing ahead of me, lead me on from this road and all the days of my life as I follow you as your disciple. And I pray this in the name of my Jubilee, the name of the Messiah, Jesus, amen, amen. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good prayer. <laughs> Beautiful.